Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is lecture series 17, M.C. Basics, dealing with different kinds of viva questions that is asked in the laboratory examination. Come, let's go into the video. Please do like, share, subscribe and comment. In the other lecture series, we have seen about the each and every program that is available for your M.C. Basics. In this video, we will be discussing about the Viva question related to 8051 microcontroller and general questions that is asked based on an embedded system and microprocessor and microcontroller. So, first question, what do you mean by an embedded system? So, embedded, the meaning embedded itself tells that it is a combination of hardware and software. So, hardware embedded with software which perform some specific function, then it is said to be embedded system. So what are all the examples? So all the real time things that we are using today is the examples of embedded system like a wristwatch, mobile phones, robots, it can be used in medical devices like ECG, pulse detection, industrial automation, consumer electronics, home automation like washing machine, switching on and off of motor, traffic lights, all these are come, all these comes under the embedded system. So why are embedded system useful? Yes, it is obviously useful. There are, it uh, reduces the human errors because of automation. And also it monitors and control all the function assigned for that system. So obviously embedded system is useful. What is a microcontroller? So we know that there is two things, microcontroller and processor, but what as a microcontroller means? So controller is nothing but you will have an IC, integrated circuits, where you will have a number of transistors and other devices connected across. That microcontroller that is integrated circuits will be performing some operation assigned to it. So it might act as a processor also. It has a memory by its own. It has input and output interfaces that can be connected. So in a small chip, you have all these kind of functions embedded into it. So that is why it is known as microcontroller. Small, small, micro. And it controls the complete function assigned to it. So it is a microcontroller. List out the difference between microcontroller and processor. So uh, first we were using microprocessor, but then seeing some disadvantages in this, we have moved to microcontroller. Not alone disadvantages, we have moved advanced with still more smaller chips and still more high functions that can be performed by that smaller chip. So when you are comparing, you can tell that the microprocessor will be the heart of the system, but microcontroller will be heart of the embedded system. So here in microcontroller, input and output components are directly embedded into it. But here processor, it has to be connected externally. So uh, not only input output, memory devices, everything has to be connected externally in the microprocessor. So when you compare the size of the circuit, it is very small for a microcontroller and it uses a large space and it is also on the larger size for microprocessor. It is cost-effective cost because the circuit is very small, easy to design. Obviously, it is cost-effective, but microprocessor is not cost-effective. So, cost-effective, we have seen how the circuit is designed, we have seen. So, what is the total com consumption of power? So, being small, the consumption of power will be less for microcontroller and high for microprocessor. How are microcontrollers more suitable than microprocessor for real-time systems? So we, we have told that we have moved on to the advanced microcontrollers. So why so? Because they are battery-powered applications. They use less power, right? So they, they are battery-powered applications. But processor are not so. They, they are processing power is more to perform any kind of function. What are the general features of microcontroller? So when it is having a small circuit, perf uh, exact flexibility, it can perform any function in a real time. So obviously it is high functional integration and it has PACA flexibility and also field programmability. So wherever you, you program to that particular atmosphere, it will react as you say. And then 
explain briefly the classification of microcontroller so generally the classification of microcontroller is based on number of bits memory devices instruction set and memory architecture so when me memory architecture we know that 8051 is dealing with hardware and some of the other controllers use von neumann so these are the two architectures instruction set is nothing but cisc and risc complex instruction set computer reduced instruction set computer and memory devices it is external memory and embedded memory external memory we use it even for microcontrollers if you don't have uh, if you want more number of space but for microprocessor default you will be connecting external devices memory devices and in microcontroller you have embedded memory devices and number of bits can be 8 bit 16 bit 32 bit 64 it can be like that so explain the general features of 8051 microcontroller so we have seen the classification of microcontroller generally so what is the general features that 8051 is having yes it has roman ram where 4k bytes will be rom and 128 bytes will be ram and it has input output ports which is 8 bit four input output ports which is each of the ports are 8 bits and you have two 8 or 16 bit timers serial port you have and there is an external code memory spaces to store the code and data separately and you have multiple internal and external interrupt sources to uh, recognize the high priority and low priority task how many pins are there in 8051 yes 40 pins so you can see the what what all the 40 pins belongs to what is the difference between program memory and data memory yes program memory is nothing but the uh, word we call, call it as rom read only memory that is it will be used for permanent saving of programs even though there is a switch off there will be they, it will be permanently stay, saved in the system data memory is nothing but we call it as ram random access memory so it is used for temporary storing we we say that right ritual memory cache so temporary storing and it will give you intermittent results and variables whenever you require hope you have understood this 10 questions we will be discussing another 10 questions in the next series of video please be stay tuned for more information thank you